Well, welcome back to the Virtual Canadian Executive Leadership. My name is Mark Blaish. I'm president of torontojobs.ca and torontoentrepreneurs.ca. Really excited that you're here and watching, and uh, we've got a great next session happening. Susan Hobson is High Performance Leadership Coach with Elite High Performance Coaching. And what other topic other than empowering high performance leadership do you want, right, Susan? <laughs> so <laughs> welcome, Susan. Thanks very much for being here and uh, take it away. Thank you, Mark. Thank oh, you. It's such an honor to be back here. Uh, I think this is my fourth year in a row speaking at this conference. So welcome, 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 my beautiful people. I'm so honored and incredibly excited to have been invited in here to the Canadian Executive Leadership Conference to speak with you all today about empowering high performance leadership. Kudos to your organizers here who put this lovely event together. This, thought, you know, this type of thought leadership has really never been as important as it is today, especially for my leaders. Uh, and if you decided to be here joining us for this, this talk, uh, to be a part of this incredibly inspiring initiative, then I know that you probably agree with me. So hi everyone, I'm Susan Hobson. I am a high performance leadership coach uh, and yes, the founder of Elite High Performance Coaching. Uh, which is a science-based coaching practice based out of downtown Toronto here in the financial district, or at least that's where we used to be uh, before all this uh, disruption in the world. Now I'm working virtually like the rest of all of you. Uh, and yeah, I, alongside a power of, of mindset coaches, are really down there on a mission to help high performance level, help performers level up their mindset so that they can play their biggest impact game. Our specialty is in the area of something called mindset strategy architecture. Try saying that one three times fast, which essentially means that we teach high performers how to think strategically so that they can unleash their highest performance potential sustainably until the rocking chair. So that's why I'm so incredibly excited to be here with all of you today, speaking about this and, and serving you with this incredibly powerful thought leadership. As I said, this topic has never been more important than it is today. There really is a giant shift. I'm not sure if you guys can feel it, but there's this giant shift that's happening right now in the world and the way that we lead our businesses and our lives. And I can hardly wait to expose you all to this game-changing mindset intel as it really is the key to how we can not only realize our highest potential as leaders and play our biggest impact game, but it's the key to thriving whilst doing so and really setting your people up to thrive too. So just to warn you, uh, not sure if you could tell right out the gates here, but I'm one incredibly passionate gal, especially about exposing my leaders to the power of mindset strategy architecture. So I suggest grabbing a pen and some sort of a notebook or a piece of paper uh, because, yeah, we're definitely going to be doing some brain training mindset exercises as a collective today. And then all that's left is just buckle that seatbelt because I'm about what I'm about to share with all of you over the next half an hour or so, so really has the power to not only change the trajectory of leadership, but in your entire life too. So the Harvard Business Review did a really interesting study uh, last year where they found that of the 365 billion, not million, billion dollars spent globally on leadership development and training, 75% of those organizations rated that training to be completely ineffective, meaning that those trainings really did not impact a single result. And when they studied why this was, it all came down to the fact that of those 75% of organizations who rated their training to be ineffective, they were the ones who failed to touch on this whole concept of mindset itself. Now, for those of you who are new uh, to this whole terminology, mindset is a term that comes from neuroscience. It refers to the way that we think, which impacts the way that we feel, which drives what you know we decide to do or we don't do. Uh, and therefore, it is really what drives our results and our impact in every single area of our performance. Our mindset uh, is a playbook. It's, it acts as this playbook of beliefs back here, which really filter how you view yourself as a leader intrinsically, what you value, what value you have to bring, and therefore is really what informs the strategies that you'll rely on to contribute that value to your people and to the world. 
In other words, the quality of your mind really determines the level of impact that you're going to be able to have on your performance journey. Our mindset of beliefs hides out in this subconscious part of our brain, uh, that part of the brain back here that's responsible for our autopilot decisions. Most people don't realize this, but 95 to 97% of your choices every single day, boom, 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 being governed on autopilot by our mindset. That's why you hear people say mindset is everything. Now, one of the biggest silver linings that I have personally seen um, in Sue as a result of all this incredible disruption over the last two years in the world um, and in, in our businesses over the last two years navigating this whole pandemic has been that it has really done a phenomenal job of exposing any of the cracks in our leadership mindset strategies as a collective. I mean, my phone has been ringing off the hook throughout this pandemic due to this fact. So I've been helping more leaders than ever really level up their mindset. This has been one giant opportunity for growth for all of us, just kind of dressed up and disguised as adversity. And the ripple effect of leaders everywhere learning how to deconstruct any of their broken down, deficit, unsustainable leadership strategies that are clearly no longer working uh, is really being felt throughout the globe. And that's why I can hardly wait to expose all of you out there to this game-changing mindset strategy, Intel. All right, so let's uh, start to break this down a little bit. Uh, so you know how to architect the mindset strategy that will empower your high-performance leadership journey and set you up and your people up to play your biggest impact game. Now, empowerment is defined in the Webster's Dictionary as the authority or the power given to someone to do something, the process of becoming stronger and more confident, especially in controlling one's life and claiming one's rights. Now, one of my all-time favorite leadership experts, Dr. Brene Brown, defines leadership as maximizing growth potential in ourselves and in those whom we lead. Empowered leadership, therefore, is all about giving ourselves and others the authority, the strength, and the confidence to optimize our growth potential towards a meaningful impact and positive contribution to the world. So how do we architect the mindset strategy that will unlock all of our empowered high-performance leadership so that we can play our biggest impact game? The first pillar in this strategy is something I like to call self-responsibility, owning the role that we play in modeling what true empowerment looks like and feels like. Most leaders don't realize this, but the model that they set for their people carries the most weight in terms of what they are actually communicating um, that they stand for and therefore expect of their people. Only 7% of what we actually communicate to our people as leaders is verbal. In other words, what we actually say, the language that we use. The other whopping 93% is nonverbal. In other words, the way that we act or behave, which really comes down to this autopilot back here, which is governed again by your mindset. And our autopilot makes decisions to act or behave in ways that are aligned with what it is that we value most what's most meaningful to us, what's most important to us, what we believe is true and right, and therefore what we stand for in our models, um, and therefore what, you know, communicates to the people that we lead um, in regards to what we expect of them. So let me ask you some key questions that I want you to really think about in regards to this first pillar. This is where I would grab that pen and paper that I mentioned at the top of this session so that you could capture whatever answers want to come up in association with these questions. And my guidance to you on this is just trust whatever comes up immediately in association with this. Don't think too hard. Don't grind the gears too hard. Um, just trust whatever wants to come up naturally. The first question I'm curious about is, do you value your growth? Do you value taking responsibility for your growth each and every day as the leader of your growth, as the, I want you to think about it as the authority of your autopilot. 
Um, yeah, modeling empowerment starts with owning the role that we play in our own, you know, growth as leaders. And so that really is the starting point. So I'm curious, are you proactively progressing, doing the very best that you can each and every day with all that you got? Are you out there pushing your limits? Are you challenging yourself to play outside the comfort zone? And if so, what does that look like? Are you acting courageously, taking risks, challenging your status quo? Are you innovating? Are you thinking outside the box? Are you investing in learning new things or acquiring new skills? Are you, you know, going the extra mile to develop more of your expertise? When our people see us acting in these ways, it really does this phenomenal job of empowering them to follow in that lead that you're setting um, and step into self-responsibility mode in their growth game themselves. So don't worry if you didn't have a chance to um, answer every single one of those questions, just jot them down and then circle back after you have more time, maybe after this event, uh, to reflect a little bit more deeply on those. So the second pillar in this empowerment strategy is something um, called self-agency which is owning the decisions that you make in regards to your bandwidth as a human being. Now, I know you know, we all have the same 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So the decisions that we make about where to invest are valuable, finite resources of time, energy, focus, and willpower is what will determine how much of our potential we're actually gonna be able to realize. So again, I'm curious, are you acting as the governor or the governess of your bandwidth? Are you making decisions that are in alignment with what it is that you value most and what it is that is the value you have to bring to the table each day? All skills, talent, strengths, and attributes, you know, that uniquely make you you. I call this playing in your sweet spot. Now, the sweet spot is a term I pull from sports. As a former pro athlete, I like to do this a lot in my work. Um, but yeah, for any of you out there who aren't familiar with that term, it's the target that an athlete aims to hit that will strategically get them the best results. Like that little square, you know, behind the basketball rim. Every time you aim the ball there, it's nothing but net. Uh, so yeah, playing in and unleashing your sweet spot in the world requires a ton of self-agency. I call this stepping into pro status, right, as the expert in you. Because only you, when you think about it, can really be the expert in you by curating expertise in your sweet spot. And when you own your role in the agency of showing up in this way each and every day, your impact game gets stronger in your leadership, more powerful, more accelerated, inspiring others around you to step into their sweet spot and own their role too. I mean, that just becomes a natural byproduct of this strategy. So I'm curious, what's in your sweet spot? Are you playing in yours? Are you making decisions about your time, your energy, your focus, your bandwidth, right? In a way that bring your sweet spot to life? And what impact is this driving in your leadership? Are you empowering others to become an expert in their sweet spot? Do you practice the agency, you know, to play in, in do they practice the agency in, in, and playing in their sweet spot or making decisions in this way too. And what ripple effect is that having on your teams? So again, if you didn't have time to get through all of that, that's okay. Just jot down some of those questions, uh, circle back to that after the event. For time's sakes, looking at the shot clock, I wanna try to stay on track so I can make sure I get through all these pillars for you guys. Um, the third pillar in this empowerment strategy is something called self-honesty, which is all about holding ourselves accountable to what we don't know, what we can't do, or where we need to ask for some additional support. Now, old school leadership strategy relies on these impossibly high expectations that convince us that we have to show up perfectly at all times with the goal of always getting it right which when you really think about it is an impossibility that sets us up for failure. This perfectionist strategy, as it's called, makes us lie to ourselves and, and lie to others about our capacity and our bandwidth, which 
obliterates any healthy boundaries that create the safe, sustainable conditions for maximum growth and can actually lead to this backdraft of resentment and disengagement. Perfectionists classically overextend themselves um, and the people that they lead, which not only leads to burnout and building cultures of burnout, but can actually create one massive glass ceiling on our growth potential and can lead to brick walls in our performance, which can sideline us from our missions entirely. So I'm curious, how self-honest are you about your capacity? Do you respect your bandwidth? Are you somebody who recklessly abuses it and overextends beyond it? Do you empower this level of honesty and transparency with your people in regards to their bandwidth and their capacity? Please note that this type of radical candor and transparency in your self-leadership and the leadership of your people has never been as important as it is today, as we navigate all the incredible pressure we're all under in our bandwidth working from home, homeschooling, navigating the sheer magnitude of this disruption to our status quo, where people are trying to adapt in real time without this level of self-honesty, I am seeing a, ramp a rampant surge in burnout, disengagement, and suffering in their psychological and physiological health. So again, this is one massively important uh, area for our empowered high performance leadership. So I really suggest that you take time to think about that one and reflect more deeply and self honestly uh, in regards to what comes up in that space. Now, the fourth pillar in this empowerment strategy is something called self-expression, having a voice and expressing your truth. So human beings, most people don't realize that this is a need, but in human beings, self-expression, like that, that's requisite. We need to express ourselves. And old school leadership, which relied on this power over rather than power within strategy, believed in a more authoritarian, punitive uh, management style, you know, telling people what to do rather than asking for their input. This is what's referred to this old school leadership as 1.0, leadership 1.0. It's born out of the industrial era of management practices, and it's the very opposite of empowered high performance leadership. Where we are led in this way, we feel unheard, undervalued, disrespected, totally unseen, all of which just annihilates the psychological safety that we need to feel in order to even express ourselves and speak up and have a voice and uh, yeah, contribute to the collective conversation. Full engagement, which, you know, bringing your, our very best to the table and getting the very best from our people requires having and asking for our voices to be heard. When we encourage ourselves and our people to contribute with our valuable thoughts and valuable ideas, we actually fuel growth. Um, we fuel growth by creating psychologically safe environments where people feel seen, heard, and therefore valued. This is how we foster a high performance, high impact, empowered team or organization. This is literally where people will thrive the most. So again, I'm very curious, how empowered do you feel to express yourself? Do you speak up? Do you use your voice by expressing and contributing your thoughts and ideas to the collective conversations that generate growth on your teams? Do you as a leader foster safe spaces where others feel empowered to speak up and contribute their thoughts and ideas? Do you lean in and encourage your people to speak up and contribute? Do you express gratitude when they do? In a time where we're all being called to adapt in our businesses, this too has never been more important than it is today. We are all being challenged to collaborate and innovate in our business practices. So we need your voice at the table more than ever. Your thoughts, your ideas, they matter. Your feedback is golden growth intel that we all must seek as leaders and of course from our people too. So please, please, please make sure you note that pillar down and some of those questions, because I think that one 
carries such transformational power in terms of the level of impact on your teams and the, the level of, of performance on your team. So promise me you're going to circle back and answer some of those questions too. The fifth pillar in this empowerment strategy is something called self-regulation, which is all about knowing how to regulate our emotions. Now, neuroscience proves that only, and this is going to shock you, this stat, only 20% of our potential is actually predicted by our IQ alone. The other whopping 80% is predicted by our EQ, our emotional intelligence. Now, emotional intelligence, for anybody out there who's never heard of this concept before, refers to how well we regulate our emotions. Uh, emotional intelligence is a skill that we can build by learning how to tune into what our emotions are trying to communicate to us. And I like to say that emotions are extremely powerful performance drivers. They're driving you up, they're driving you down in your performance. And if you don't understand what they're trying to communicate to, to you, then you're not at the helm. You're not in your leadership, right? Because they are actually in control of you. So I like to, in my practice uh, with my leaders, refer to emotions as intel, you know, uh, being sent from the brain to the body, communicating to us as human beings what it is that we actually need, what, what it is neurochemically that we actually require, um, not only to survive, but to grow. So where we get triggered into these red flag emotional negative states, our brain is literally trying to get our attention. So what I do is I teach my clients to think of this like the light on the dashboard of the, the car, right? That, that light that tells you when you need to refuel on gas because you're running low on gas, or you need to put air in the tires or oil. Um, yeah, it's, it's telling you that your deficit on the resources that you need to make it to your destination. So when you experience these types of triggers emotionally, which we're all experiencing lots of those red flags and all of this disruption, um, yeah, your job is to pull over, to crack the hood on your experience and get really curious as to what that is that your brain is trying to communicate to you that you need, that you might be running deficit on. Continuing to drive towards your performance goals or towards the vision that you've set for your business in a deficit emotional state is literally the danger zone for any leader. Um, it, it will only lead to breakdowns and roadblocks that will prevent you from safely and successfully arriving at your destination. So I want us to reflect on this. I want you to ask yourself, how emotionally intelligent am I? How in tune to my emotional intel am I? Do, I'm curious, do you practice self-regulation? Do you pull over when you get triggered? Do you get curious about what's going on behind these gates subconsciously? Um, do you even know how to interpret the needs that are unmet in your experience that are behind those red flag triggers? Are you able to regulate that by honoring what your emotions are telling you that you need? So the sixth and final pillar in this empowerment, uh, empowered high performance leadership strategy is self-trust. Trusting yourself to lead your life, not just live it by going through the motions, you know, of what is expected of you or what you've always done. High performance is defined actually as maximizing your rate of growth and impact sustainably. And this does not happen inside the comfort zone. This is why high performers pride themselves on living outside of the comfort zone because they know that's where real meaningful growth and impact will happen. So one of the biggest psychological barriers to living in the unknown growth zone, as I like to call it, is the fear of uncertainty. Most human beings prefer to live inside the known, not so comfortable zone because it's familiar and therefore easy to predict. One of the silver linings I see in the endurance of navigating sustained lockdowns, you know, we went through three of them here in Toronto, is that people really starting to notice our need for unpredictability, uh, our need for novelty and our need for variety. As human beings, we're fundamentally here to grow and evolve it's the very nature of our cells. We're constantly evolving and changing in our bodies. 
And most people don't realize this, but our brains are actually the same way. They actually require the same thing. And where we're, we don't get mentally challenged enough, you know, which going outside our comfort zone basically guarantees, we suffer. We suffer just like our bodies are suffering in all those isolation periods, you know, that COVID-15 everybody's talking about. Yeah, our brains are the same way. They need to be challenged. But still, we mentally choose to stay in lockdown when we choose to run merely on this autopilot of what we already know and what we've always done. And so that's why high performance leadership requires a ton of self trust. Not only must we trust ourselves to prioritize challenging our limits, right? When an autopilot feels so much easier and we already feel exhausted from life in the fast lane, but we must trust ourselves enough to take leaps of faith into the unknown where uncertainty lives. And we must embrace the vulnerability that comes with that. You know, that whole showing up and being seen with no guarantee of outcome. That's how vulnerability is, is defined. Um, but yeah, that's what we got to do because that's what keeps us engaged in a really meaningful way. This engagement towards meaningful challenge actually leads us in the direction of something known as or, or called the flow state, where things actually start to feel a lot more effortless and easy. Finding and sustaining our flow outside of the comfort zone is the key, not only for max growth and impact, but to unlocking a sense of fulfillment, which is actually what sustains high performance leaders the most. That sense of satisfaction or fulfillment that they get when they challenge themselves in meaningful ways. So playing outside the comfort zone can show up in, you know, all kinds of different forms. It can show up in the form of trying new things, changing the way we show up as leaders, setting new boundaries, asking for help. Uh, when we don't know the answer to something, speaking up at the big meeting, like we were talking about a second ago, using your voice, expressing your ideas, uh, or even just raising your hand and offering to do the big presentation or basically anything that stretches your current limits and helps you develop new capacity or discover more of that untapped potential. That's why I call this the guaranteed growth zone. Uh, making the choice to trust yourself, taking risks, or trusting your people to do the same is also the key to unlocking not only your empowerment but and their empowerment, but courage too. And the more you flex this mindset muscle with the goal of doing the best you possibly can with all that you got in your sweet spot, which when you think about it is awesome because that's a goal that's always in your control, Knowing that if you mess up or you miss the mark, it's just a valuable growth opportunity because it's feedback, right? There's feedback available to you that's going to illuminate where you need to go and get stronger intentionally. Now, this is a critical distinction and monster growth pivoting point where, you, you know, you fall short of the target. It's viewed as valuable growth feedback, not failure, because you illuminate further opportunities for further growth. Plus, you're always guaranteed to grow and get stronger when you just make that leap of faith in the first place. And the truth and the real power of this strategy is that when you practice playing outside your comfort zone, you learn to trust yourself even more. Because when you show up and you give it your all with the goal of progression, not perfection, nine times out of 10, you'll actually have a tremendous impact. You'll hit the mark, you'll score the goal, you'll ace that presentation, or you'll land the big deal. And this will create tons of amazing more building blocks for your confidence, you know, really raising the bar on what you're actually capable of in your potential, which creates incredible enhancement and momentum to your rate of growth. So once you own this pillar and living outside the comfort zone becomes a way of life alongside the previous other five pillars that we architected, max growth and playing your biggest impact game will be a natural side ripple effect. All right, let's bring it all home now. I see the shot clock just hit the buzzer. So just to wrap things up, please remember all the knowledge in the world will not impact your growth in and of itself. It's taking action on what we worked on today that will really translate into having a meaningful impact. Architecting this playbook of empowered beliefs as a leader not only sets you up to play your biggest impact game, it's what 
you know, set your people up to play theirs too. And like I said, this is really, this is where people thrive the most. It's, uh, yeah, the best part, I think, of all of this strategy that we just architected today is that it's intrinsically based. And that, that, that means that it's always in your control. Uh, when navigating disruption, that comes in handy, let me tell you. <laughs> when you own your role in executing on these six pillars, the outcome of high-impact leadership takes care of itself. True empowerment comes down to owning the choice to lead in this high-impact way that not only helps you thrive rather than just, you know, survive like some people, um, but it helps to inspire this type of high quality of life experience in others too. And believe me, the ripple effect of that choice will serve the rest of us big time. Uh, I call this mission Leadership 2.0. This is new school leadership, and I am calling on you today to join me on this mission. This world needs this, you know, more than ever, needs us to lead our lives and our businesses in this new school way. I really, truly want this to be our legacy someday. I truly believe that answering this call has the power to change the way of game, the game of life and business is being played forever. Now, for those of you who are you know, ready to join me on this mission, I invite you to follow my podcast, The Leadership Launchpad Project. You can find that on any major um, uh, podcast platform. And it's where we unpack all the top Leadership 2.0 strategies and interview top experts in the field each and every week. Or you can come join me and my High Performance Tribe community by visiting EliteHighPerformance.com uh, and joining our newsletter. It's called The Playbook. You'll see it when you get to the website. Uh, which will give you access to immediate discounts on high-performance coaching services, executive coaching services, um, access to any of our group programs or high-level mastermind experiences or retreats, as well as weekly thought leadership and podcast releases so that, yeah, it's sent right to your, your inbox and you'll never miss a beat. And for anyone out there who's interested in any of our uh, many Leadership 2.0 offerings, everything from group coaching programs on developing psych safety, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, breaking burnout, uh, emotional intelligence, which we talked about today, uh, optimizing talent, building your dream team, or any of the many other coaching uh, and training opportunities, you can visit my website to book a free consultation with me where we can really sit down and audit your organization's needs and match you with the very best solution. Lastly, all this motivation from today is enough to get you going, but it's the consistency you will gain by joining a tribe like ours that is going to keep you going and growing. Thank you all for joining me today. It's truly been such an honor to serve you all. Your highest potential is literally my passion. So let's go, Dream Team. Let's get on our mission and let's get unleashing it together.